Hello, everyone, and welcome in another English One podcast. I know I'm always uh, repeating myself, telling that we have a special guest, but for me, every every guest, uh, especially the the guests, uh, every guest over 300 pounds <laughs> are special. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm very good, mate. Thank you for for having me on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, for those who are who just just cannot read uh, Nathan Styles is your is your name actually yes. <laughs> because that, that was the the worst introduction uh, on the planet Earth probably <laughs> <laughs> you supposedly tell the name before the the all the titles and and the weight especially but but that's good man doesn't matter this is a bodybuilding uh, uh, podcast so probably for most guys your weight is pr more important than than your name even. <laughs> yeah how are you bro i'm good i'm very good i'm um coming up to two weeks post show so uh, i feel a little bit fresher um dropped a little bit of fatigue so it's um yeah sleep's getting back to uh to where it should be so i'm feeling good yeah you've always uh, get that disruption in your in your sleep uh, closer to the show or oh it's better you're probably using a CPAP machine or something like that yeah <laughs> Yeah, I am using the yeah. CPAP. My, my sleep's not been bad, to be fair. This prep, it's been pretty good, especially with the CPAP. But uh, I'm getting a, an extra, at least an extra hour um, post show, just just because like you're not thinking too much about the show yeah. coming up and things like that. So, so yeah, it's um, it, it's nice to be back into a little bit more of a normalized routine. Yeah, you're you're a tricky one, just because. You're uh, even uh, close to the show. You're eating like a ton of of, uh, of food for, especially for like a normal person, a normal human being. <laughs> so most of the guys think that if you are eating close to three, four hundred carbs, you're fresh and uh, agile and uh, feeling great, and you you're full and you have a great pump, uh, etc. But that's we we both know that. That that isn't the case. <laughs> That's not the case. When when you get lean, when you get lean, lean, it, it doesn't really matter how much food you're eating. You're still tired. You're still hungry. You're still flat. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually was watching a podcast that uh, oh how how was the Magic Eye Magic Eye I think Magic Eye yeah uh, he he uploaded not so long ago this that was a, probably a, an older one. I, I, I guess because he, he has like a new channel right now, like yeah. his personal one or something like that. But this is actually was your it, that wasn't your your pro debut, but in in a way it was, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't my official pro debut. Um because yeah. I did the, when I won my pro card in Italy uh in twenty twenty two, I did the show the day after. Um but just because I was there and I was in shape, uh, I just I just sort of jumped in. Um, it was funny because I registered, and I can remember going backstage. They didn't he they didn't have my name or, or number down on the list to compete, so they had to write it in, um, and they spelt my name wrong. So I was uh, I was like, oh, this is this is not gonna this is not gonna go good. So I don't even know if the judges had my name on the list anyway. Um, so yeah, the uh, the pro debut wasn't really a pro debut, even though I was on I was on stage, but I don't know if anybody saw me. Um, so um, this this was this season was like the official debut season, if you want to if you want to call it that. Yeah, competing like that is always a bummer. But it, technically, you 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 not register anywhere. So if someone wants to even a check. Or something like that. He, he just can't. So that was your pro debut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can just pretend that. <laughs> but yeah, tell, yeah. I mean, on my, uh, even on yeah. my on my athlete profile on uh, on the IFBB, you get like an athlete profile, and you get a pro card for like register yeah. uh, to register for competitions. So even on there, like when I go on my twenty twenty two profile, 
like the Italy, the Italy shows, like nothing shows up. So it only shows that I've done these two pro shows. So it didn't even, it didn't, even though I did it, it's not for some reason. It's, it's not even there. So, what was the time time difference between your not official uh, pro debut to your official pro pro debut? So nearly two years. So I won my pro card on. September the 11th, I believe it was, 2022. And I did my pro debut, my official pro debut um, in, in Texas on August the 9th or 10th. So it was like 23 months. Yeah. And, and the, there's a, there's a actually interesting story that comes with that, just because you're, you're one year a pro card and you either change a coach Or compete with your coach, your current coach uh, back in the day. So, can you just uh, get us a little bit closer to that story? Yeah. So, um, Josh Maley, the Viking, who's probably the largest um, bodybuilder on the IFBB Pro Circuit at the minute. Um, he was coaching me for like two and a half years, from 2019 to the end of 2021. Um, And it, uh, one of my check-ins, af after I competed in 2021, uh, one of my check-ins towards the end of the year, um, I sent in my, my check-in pictures and my updates and I outlined kind of what shows I were wanting to do in 2022, like regionals and pro qualifiers. Um, and he came back to me and said, Nate, like, it looks as though we're going to be doing the same shows. Like, that's kind of the same timeline as what I've, Um, I've sort of planned out for my uh, for for my regional and pro qualifiers. He said so because we 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 became really good friends. I've known Josh for years. Um, and respect to Josh, he said, I understand if you would feel more comfortable somebody else prepping you for next year because I know we're both professional and we're both have a lot of respect for each other but if I'm asking you to do something at like three weeks out and we're doing the same show and you're thinking why is he asking me to do that is there a, is there a specific reason why he's asking me to do that um and I said I don't want to mess I don't want to, to like mess with your head and on the same in the same breath he didn't want to be thinking that I was thinking that um so I didn't have no intention in changing coaches But obviously he brought it up and and kind of kind of said it might be best if we didn't sort of compete together and me coach you into those shows. So I did respect him massively for that. So I said, well, if I am going to change coaches, um, I'd rather do it now. So I've got time in an off season with a coach so they can work with me and, and figure out my body. Uh, and I'm not just changing just to start prep, um, and and things not go the way that we that I, I, I sort of plan it. Um, so we decided to part ways, but I wanted him to have some input in in terms of who he would like me to work with and who he thought would would be a good fit. So we um, spoke to him about Callum uh, Ray Strick, a, a pro coach, and Josh had worked with Cal. Um, sort of previously when there was personal trainers back in the day and he was he was all for it and massively up for that. So it was quite an easy transition. So I've been with Cal nearly, yeah, so since since the end of 2021, start of 2022. So, yeah, a good two years now. Yeah. And Josh is a man. I, I, I spoke him, uh, with him uh, here on the podcast as well, just after he won his pro card. To uh, yeah. because he is coaching himself. That's so fucking impressive for me. Just because you're in your head so much just before the show that I I can't imagine even to 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 prepare myself. Even though that is that is my ultimate goal to do a, <laughs> a, a at least one show uh, by myself. Did you did you yeah, try it yeah. yourself? I've, I've, I, my first ever show, I prepped myself like in 2015, the first yeah, time I Yeah, me, me too, but I was, I was natural back then, so that's probably not yeah. the common. I, 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 I literally just ran myself into the floor. Um, <laughs> me too. Yeah, I just literally drilled myself into the floor. Didn't know about a peak week, didn't know about a carb up, 
I literally just dug all the way into the show, um, had a few rice cakes and honey on the day of the show, and that were, that were it. Uh, <laughs> so I've I've never coached myself. Um, that is something that I think I, I'm of the mindset as well of of always like push, 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 push. So having a coach there to pull me back when I need pulling back um, is is handy. So I give Josh massive props. He's coached himself for 10 years and to be able to send yourself checking photos or look at your checking pictures and, and look at your, your, your spreadsheet or your tracker and make a rational decision when you're five, four, three, two weeks out is is very very impressive yeah that's crazy yeah i've watched uh, all probably all of his videos and he's so freaking analytics with everything he do for himself yeah. that's 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 impressive as fuck it's like a john jewett it's it's the same yeah. kind of mind yeah yeah massively yeah um which is which is impressive i think i think i would like to try it once um but yeah It's, yeah, um, it, it is. It is attempting to to to. I would really like to try, but I I. On the other hand, I know that I would probably overdone so many things that that's that's unnecessary to do. That I'm just too afraid. And also, I have a great coach right now, so I, I'm not even thinking about it. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> Tell me, man, just because. You're, I've watched obviously your, your YouTube and you you speak about it uh, 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 briefly uh, when it comes to uh, like um, the the results of the of the show. You 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 you're actually in your goal just because your goal was was to to be in a top ten, yeah, right yeah. now. So are you happy with 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 everything? How it how it goes? This yes. Time? So I've had some time, obviously, post-show to kind of reflect on the season. Um, so ah. Texas wasn't in... Sorry, the dogs. <laughs> so Texas wasn't the initial planned show, but because it was Gasp and Better Bodies weekend yeah. and they sort of asked us to go out, I was like, Cal, do you think we can like dig in and get ready for this show? Um He was like, yeah, I think we can. Let's put his foot down. So he put his foot down and, and, and sort of dug in hard for, for the Texas show. And we got in in like legit shape. Um, but we probably didn't have quite enough time to wash off the fatigue that I'd built up from digging in so hard. Um, so even though I was in legit condition um, and we filled, we, we, we carved up pretty aggressively, um, it kind of just washed off the fatigue rather than filling me up. So we could have been fuller. Um, and the feedback that I got was condition was on point. I just needed 10 pound of, of more muscle. And I spoke to Tyler after the show, made sure that I went and got feedback. And he said, like, like things will start happening for you if you bring your upper body up, more back width and, and density, um, more chest thickness, um, basically more upper body, um, like 10 pounds in, in the upper body. Uh, he says, and, and you, you will start progressing through the, uh, through the ranks, which is, which was great to, to hear. Um, so Italy was my first planned show. Um, we kind of reversed out of that. And I went back to my baseline diet, which was like a, just a touch higher than what it was like pre Texas. And my body weight started climbing nicely. Um, and I was like six to eight pounds up, um, but in the same condition, uh, which was, I, which I was, would, I, I would uh, say rather that you were better. Just, yeah. Just I, because I, you, you was, you was a, a lot more fuller and your glutes was crazy straight. You don't, you don't even have to squeeze them. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. think I was, I think I was just more detailed because I was fuller, um, Which was which was a great position to be in going into Italy. Um, obviously, there was four weeks between the shows, which mentally is always difficult, especially when body yeah. weight body weight starts rising and you've been peeled and you've been at a low body weight. You're like, "Fuck, am I getting fatter? Am I getting softer?" Um, but 
I trusted the process. Uh, me and Cal spoke about what we was going to do for Italy. And I was all for it. Like, you've got to trail things. So we um, we set out to, to sort of be quite aggressive, um, which in hindsight we probably didn't need to because I was already quite fresh and, and fuller. But we was even more aggressive with the load uh, in Italy. Um, and it, it didn't play play out how we wanted it to. So, I mean, I, on my second day of loading, I must have done like 10 and a half, 11,000 calories. Like, I, I probably put like 30,000 calories down in three days. So, I was, I ended up like leaving the apartment to, to, to go to the show and I weighed myself. I was like 304 pounds. Um, and on the morning of the show in Texas, I was 289. Um, so I probably went on stage after three meals at maybe like 292. So, yeah, I was a, I, I think I'd have been on stage about 306. A little bit more. Food. And so I'd have been 305 pounds on stage in, in Italy and like 290 ish on stage in, uh, in, in Texas. Now, obviously, with that amount of weight gain, um, there's a there's a trade-off. And the trade-off is a little bit conditions not as sharp um, because you've pushed fullness that hard. So the detail's not as, uh, as good. Uh, and with that amount of food volume that we pushed in, um, my midsection control wasn't as good. Lines were a little bit blurred in my midsection. Um, and it kind of threw the balance to my physique off a little bit. Uh, even though I was fucking super full, um, it just it just wasn't the look that they was looking for. So I got feedback and basically they said, look, we, we really like the look in Texas. You just need more muscle. Um, we we know what you, you've, you've tried to do kind of thing, which kind of... You, you kind of spilled a little bit and you wasn't as sharp and we like that that sharp look on you. So, yeah, it, it was something that we trialled, um, didn't pan out, which yeah, obviously the game is a results-based, it's a results-based sport, but I, we've never pushed anything super hard with this new muscle that I've got. So it was a, a learning curve. So when I, when I, I was a little bit disappointed just because I was a little bit disappointed with the look, even though it was fucking fun. Like, the the, the yeah. load was fun. It was, it was fun to get super full. I was just a little bit like, it wasn't my, it wasn't my preferred look. Um, but it's one of those things, like, you've got to try it. You've got to take data from it. And, uh, and we know what we need to do uh, in this next off-season. And that's just put more muscle on and, and come back in, in that condition, if not if not better uh, than what I brought to Texas, and I think once you've got more maturity, so another year in an off season, another year with some more new muscle laid down, um, you, you just kind of get harder and drier, and the more detail shows through, the the sort of more mature you get. And I still feel like I'm pretty fresh. Like I didn't compete till I was 27, uh, and I'm 37 in December, so I've only been competing nine years. So it's a case of I still feel pretty fresh. Um, I still feel I've got a lot of progress to make and a lot of muscle to put on. So there's uh, there's definitely a lot more progress to be had, which is exciting. So yeah, I, I would say that definitely you have more in you. Yeah, and when it comes to the picking, it's even if the best coach, I think uh, it's always a little bit gamble, especially with physics like. Like I feel I have the same problem as you, so I've always tends to be get flatter on my upper body because my my legs are always full, and this yeah. is like a really hard to to nail it because if I am not carved up well, uh, my chest is so fucking flat that I'm looking like I will never even bench in my life. And then yeah. if I'm too full, I lost all of my details on my on my quads and all the little funny things that makes like a, my physics steps out. And I think you have exact same problem just because yeah. you're so detailed 
especially like like your your uh, like uh, glutes, your hamstrings, uh, your quads, and you you say uh, upper body, but I would really tell us told you that you you need like a more chest because I think that your back is actually a, a quite large. I, I think maybe not so like a it's, dense, but you are a wide it, guy, so. Yeah, I mean, my back has come on a lot. Like, I made a lot of progress. Definitely, on my back this yeah. Last, yeah, this last off season, um, I've had a recurring shoulder injury, which I think has cut, sort of slowed my 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 uh, my chest progression down. But that's on the mend uh, and feeling good. I mean, I did an incline press for like eighteen months, so I'm back on doing incline pressing again. I'm incline flying again. Um, so. As long as I can keep like injuries at bay um, and be sensible with my training and progress, and I think I can I can bring my whole upper body up now. So we've got a new training split in place, um, which I've never been as excited for a training block. So that's tailored to uh, keeping like the lower body at like maintenance volume, like really really low volume across the week, uh, and just hammering the the frequency on my um, my chest, my my arms, my back, my side delts, things like that. So, hopefully, we should see uh, a really uh, a really successful off season again, and uh, and an improved package the next time I get on stage. Yeah, I I, w I would really love to to ask you just because you told before that the the, the feedback from the judges was that you need about ten pounds more of of muscle, but. You're yeah. over 330, I think, 30 pounds uh, in the off-season. So I, I can't even imagine how awful you might you have to feel with that weight. So are you prepared for that <laughs> again? I'm prepared. I'm prepared for that. I mean, I've been back up to that body weight uh, a few times now. Um Two, two off seasons, I've been back up to that sort of around that three forty mark. Um, the first time I got there, the first time I got over three hundred pounds was fucking horrendous. Uh, the next, the the next time I got over three hundred pounds, it was a lot easier. Um, and then the first time I got up to like three thirty five, three forty, it was it was horrific. Last off season, um, obviously it's uncomfortable, but I'd got used to that um, and I keep cardio in year round and I was still able to take the dogs for a walk twice a day for, 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 for a couple of miles and not get shin pump or not get back pump. Um, my training kept progressing nicely. My blood pressure stayed in a good spot. So last off season, even though I, I reached my peak body weight, was probably the most comfortable I've felt in an off-season. So I can't be... Other than being like a sweaty mess all the time because you're just fucking big and heavy and you're eating a fucking shit ton of food and it's just... It is uncomfortable, but if you do it repeatedly, like, you kind of get used to it. So I'm I'm definitely prepared um, for, for, another, for another big off-season. Now, the, th the thing is, like, Yes, body weight is going to have to go up towards that 345, 350 again, but just better quality. Like yeah. sometimes it pro you probably don't need to get as heavy um, as long as it's cleaner, better quality muscle and you're keeping everything um, everything in check in terms of like your health metrics, your, your blood pressure, your blood glucose, your insulin sensitivity. I'm using my CPAP. I'm getting my sleep in. I'm keeping my stress low. My digestion's on point. So they're, they're all things that if if one of them starts slipping and breaking down, then everything goes to shit. So it's very important to try and keep all them, uh, them variables as nailed on as I can this off-season. Yeah, it is funny just because most of the the gym rats and like yeah, like a gym folks, not uh, are, are are never in 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 the 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 entire life reach the the peak weight. That's hard, but not hard even physically, but but mentally hard. Everything is so fucking 
annoying and ex you're exhausted by that even like uh, you want you wanted to, to put on your the socks it's 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 a challenge you i sometimes i feel like i have to drink pre-workout before i put on my socks just to get some motivation you sh the, the, there's supposed to be some sort of like a mot motivational videos for for bodybuilders before you're putting up your your clothes <laughs> seriously yeah man so so yeah and that's the, that's the tricky tricky part and like you said the little stuff that people are always neglected just because some smaller guys are thinking that the 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 idea to get big is just to to put a little bit more drugs or a lot of drugs for most of the people and just that's that's enough but when you are really big, the, the drugs are actually not that important. The every small details you just said, so like doing your cardio, doing your steps, proper hydration, like uh, proper sleep uh, management, yeah, like a CPAP machine. For me, that's a freaking game changer. I, I, yeah, I, yeah that's, that's, that's crazy how everything's changed. And without those little pieces, you just, you just can't. You just can't progress even on the 10 grams of gear just can't yeah i agree I f fully agree that i mean when i started using my cpap machine which was 2021 um i literally put on seven seven pounds in like seven i think it was like seven or ten pounds in like three weeks like my, i didn't change one thing at all i just started using my cpap machine my recovery improved, my training performance improved, my sleep improved, my body weight, which was stagnant for a while, just started climbing. And I was like, what the fuck is happening here? And it was literally just from using my CPAP machine. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a game changer. This is why I asked you uh, right on the, on the beginning of this podcast about your sleep, because I've noticed this is the first time like a, not this prep, just because this is the second time I, I prepare in this year. But the 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 first prep, like a three months ago or four months ago, that was my first prep when I was using a CPAP machine, and I been able to sleep to the last day of the show, and that was a freaking game changer. I've always thought that yeah, yeah. that's probably a trend or a, a clan butyrol or 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 I just you've always. Uh, like uh, pushing it into a drugs. Yeah, there's definitely the drugs. It's so, like, no, man, most of those guys just have freaking sleep apnea and not even not even know that. I, I was in a position yeah. that I, I, I'm sitting in, uh, on the waiting room and I just fall asleep. So, so come on. <laughs> that's, that's not a normal thing that you're always tired, <laughs> always tired. You sleep 10 hours and you're tired. That's fuck. So, so for those guys who are struggling with that, maybe it's not your 20 micrograms of clenbuter or maybe you just just so fucking heavy that you just suffocate yourself <laughs> with your weight yeah exactly. <laughs> basically yeah, exa yeah exactly that exactly that yeah you've mentioned a little bit about your your like uh training regime for for this uh for this uh off season because the yeah. obviously the chests are on the, on the it's, it's gonna play the first uh, uh, role on uh, on everything just because this is like your the weakest point. Let's say like that. I I don't want to say weak yeah. because nothing no, no, on no. you is weak. Like that. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I I I'm 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 not deluded, uh, and I'm very realistic with what I need to bring up. So I'm one of these people who I would rather people be honest with me because I'm honest with them. Like, if I've got clients, I don't blow smoke. I say, you need this. You need to be leaner. You need to be bigger. You need more muscle here. Some people don't like to take that because they've got people around them telling them, you're fantastic. You don't need this. You don't need that. Yeah. But I would rather people be honest with me because that's how I am with them. Um, so, and when you're a coach and a bodybuilder, you've been doing this 10, 15 years, you've got, You've got eyes. I, I can, I can, I can take my checking yeah. pictures. I can take my checking videos. I can look back and I'm like, "Fucking hell! I need more of this. I need more of that." Right. So I'm the first first person to um, to admit and and understand what I need to bring up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have uh, some sort of imposter syndrome? 
because this is the for me this is the first year that I starting to feel like a bodybuilder before if someone asked me what I do I just hold myself just not to say I am a bodybuilder just because I thought that's gonna be sounds like funny for someone like I am a yeah. bodybuilder you're just a fucking small piece of shit and you're a bodybuilder what the fuck <laughs> I, I, I think I think we all do to some degree um but yeah I've, I've definitely got uh, which do you know what I don't think it's a bad thing um I think it shows that you're humble as well um so I, I yeah I, th I think I have got a little bit of imposter syndrome um even weighing 340 pounds in the off season you still I still feel small um that's just I think that's just bodybuilding I think once you start physique development and and bodybuilding um you're never satisfied so you're kind of fucked in that in that yeah. sense unless you are Mr Olympia then um it's a different story but yeah I think we've all got slight imposter syndrome yeah I I, I am not sure about that Mr Olympia thing just because yesterday I was listening to the Frank McGrath podcast that was like a Canadian beef podcast or something like that they have like as a guest uh, Frank McGrath, and he just w was telling the story uh, when he first met the Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the crowd just starting to shout that, uh, show the uh, the forearms, show the forearms, and he just immediately forearms. starts to doing this just to <laughs> just to be in a perfect forearm shape for the for that three seconds when when he gonna squeeze it for the Arnold. So we just. <laughs> Our our head just not just not working as as it's supposed to. The the funniest thing is that we are doing it for ourselves, but we are the only ones who are not appreciate our physics. It's maybe at three points in a year when you are really standing in front of the mirror and you think oh, that's kind of okay, yeah. And the yeah, rest yeah. rest of the year is uh, I'm a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but. When when I when I sort of look back on um, the the progress, like I'm like, yeah, do you know what? I'm pr I'm pretty happy with that. But but there's always a caveat, like but and there's more to be had. So and I suppose that's what keeps us motivated and and keeps us wanting to to progress. Which is like I say, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Without that, probably we we've just uh, be. I don't want it to sound bad, but this is like a kind of uh, men's uh, physique or, or classic physique story, yeah? That, that you, you just, yeah, exactly. you, you're just maintaining. You, yeah. you're, just, you're restricted by the weight cap, so you just you can't do shit. So this is this is why I love open bodybuilding, just because there's there are no rules and there are no limits, and that's what's really uh, scary and fun <laughs> in the same time. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about your your approach for this to, for this uh, off season because I've imagined that that you built a lot of muscle in this last two years. So probably yeah. you and your coach are not gonna changing a lot just because the system obviously works. But can you just yeah. bring us a little bit closer into your diet? So like everyone obviously can watch your full day of eating, but this is just a like a one piece of your day, but you've obviously probably have a rotation, like a training, non-training days, maybe a high day. So can you just yeah. tell us about it? Yeah, of course. So currently um, I was, I had my first off plan meal last night. Um, I went out with the, a, a few friends. We went to a Turkish grill. So I've not had anything off plan since the show. I just went straight back to my baseline diet um, and I washed off the load um, from from Italy, which like five to six days, I was back down seventeen pounds um, to like two hundred and ninety pounds, which was kind of like my uh, well my, my Texas stage weight, but my pre sort of pre Italy load, um, like my lowest before before sort of flying out to Italy, which um, I was happy that I'd got back down to that. Now I have got. I've got my one of my best friend's weddings in two weeks. 
uh, and I had I had my my suit, which he's paid for, tailored at three weeks out. So I've got to stay within around four or five pounds of where I currently am, or some fucked, and I'm not getting in that suit. Um, so at the minute, even though I feel a bit fresher and I'm dropping fatigue, I still feel like I'm in prep because I'm still doing my 30 minutes cardio, I'm still doing my 10k steps. My food is my food's not changed. My food's not gone up since the sh- before the show. Uh, so I'm still on baseline diet with just I've just had one free meal last night. Um which I went up 3 pounds and I was like, "Oh shit, I can't go up any more than that." Um so that's going to probably trickle back off towards the weekend. Uh and then I'll be in a position after the wedding to slowly start up in food. Obviously, I'm in a recovery phase at the minute, so drugs have come down. So I'm on like a, a cruise dose, as they call it, a elevated TRT, which is still very super physiological for somebody my size, but it's it's what's required. And going off past cruise doses um, and what I can get away with to still bring my... Uh, my markers back into check. It's it's pretty reasonable. So um, I'll I'll be <clears throat> I'll be in this phase for like six to eight weeks. I've got a post show IV drip this weekend, and then I'll have my blood work done as well. See where all my health markers are at, and see if there's anything that I need to implement to get things back in line. Um, and then. Off season, official off season will start around mid November. Um, so currently, my training day, training day diet is very very basic. So, I mean, people think that this is a lot of food still, um, <laughs> but I'm fucking starving on this food. So, five thousand one hundred calories, um, <laughs> seven hundred and fifty carb. 340 protein, 90 grams of fat um, on a training day. On a non-training day, 600 carb, 330 protein, 95 grams of fat. That's interesting. Uh, which is 4,590, 4,600 calories. So 5,100 and 4,600 currently. Um, and the food sources are very, very... Um, basic and clean food sources um so for breakfast or for meal one fucking breakfast meal one uh three whole eggs and i i rotate between i've, I've been fancying liver i don't know if you eat liver in poland of course yeah yeah like so chicken, chicken liver yeah so i have either have beef liver or chicken liver so i've been eating three whole eggs um with some beef liver or chicken liver or sometimes if i don't get it from the butchers i just have chicken breast Jasmine rice, uh, some veggies, and 100 grams of fruit. Pre-workout is cream of rice, raisins or banana, some dark chocolate and whey isolate. Intracarbs are at 50 with essential aminos and creatine. Post-workout, 250 grams of white fish, 125 grams of uh, jasmine rice, and I also have like five caramel snacker jacks or five caramel rice cakes just for something a little bit sweet. Um, And then... I've got a meal of chicken and rice with some coconut oil and some fruit, some uh, white fish and rice with some coconut oil and some fruit, and then pre-bed cream of rice, whey isolate, fruit, and some almond butter. Um, I was eating salmon, but I've had salmon every day for the last two years, even on my car. I just fancy the change, so that's why I put white fish in and just added some coconut oil. Uh, and it just seems to be going down nicely. And then literally, it's literally exactly the same on non-training day, other than the the amounts are obviously not as much, and I don't have an intracarb. Um, and my, uh, I mean, my portion sizes are very similar. Still like 125 grams of dry weight rice per meal or 100 grams of cream of rice per meal. So I'm still eating a decent amount of food. Um, but... Like when people say, oh, you're eating loads, uh, <laughs> like that's still nearly half the amount of carbohydrates I consume in peak off season. Like I think my carbs got up to like 1,250. Um, 
peak off season. Um, so it's yeah, yeah. I, it, it, I'm pretty hungry still. I'm really, I'm really curious why you have so little of a of a rotation uh, when it comes to the training and non training days when it comes to the carbs. But probably you just explained it really well. If you lower it more, you probably will losing so much weight through yeah, the so, old days. It's, yeah. Yeah, we we had to up this in 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 prep because my my carbs on non training day came down to about four hundred, um, and when my sort of metabolism really ramped up and my body was was firing, and I, on a rest day, I'd get up and do my cardio, I'd do some steps, I'd go for a sports massage, I'd have an infrared sauna, uh, I'd eat all my meals, and I'd literally go to bed and wake up and I'd have dropped six pounds. Yeah, that's, um, that's what I thought. And I was like, fucking, so every rest day I was like dropping, even when we upped it, the rest day I'd pull three pounds back off. Um, so they the, the can't be too, too much variance in, yeah. in 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 sort of the days for me uh, or I just drop off very, very fast. It changes a little bit in off season, obviously when your metabolism slows down a little bit, body fat starts creeping on a little bit. So the, where there's only like four or five hundred calories difference at the minute. When I get to peak off season, there may be like a thousand a thousand calories difference, maybe even a touch more. Um because the the requirements uh are, are just not there on a on a rest day. And I'm still eating maybe five and a half thousand calories on a rest day. So um yeah, it's uh, it, it just we, we just shift with how, how my body's responding really. What about the cardio? You 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 tell that you're doing a 45 minutes six times a a, a week. Did I? Thirty minutes, uh, seven days a week, so thirty minutes daily. Okay, okay. Do you, are you doing it on a on a treadmill, stepper, or stairs? Spin bike. So I've got okay. a, we've got a little studio in the back garden because my partner Phoebe, she's a posing coach, so she's got like a a studio where she has clients over for posing, uh, and we've got a a stairmaster. Well, a, st a stepper, it's a pre like a pre core yeah. uh, stepper, and uh, I've got a spin bike in there as well. But when when I go on the stepper, my head hits the roof, so I just use the spin bike. <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> so how, how, how I'm, this is like an off topic, but I, I am really curious. What are the difference in in, in size, uh, like a height, uh, between you and uh, Jamie the Giant? Uh, I think Jamie's six five or six six, um, and I'm like probably I've probably lost an inch because I've shaved my head, uh, <laughs> but I'm touching six six in the off season because I've got a little bit more water on my feet and I'm a little bit taller. I'm six four. I'm about six three and a half at the minute. Um, oh my god, there's a f it's crazy just because uh, even. Uh, Your your heart is actually putting a pressure on your heart, and yeah, yeah. with all that weight, yeah, definitely you have to do the cardio all year round, probably just to stay. Yeah, well, I do uh, cardio all year round, and then each year I get a um, uh, an ECG, an echocardiogram, um, just to make sure that that everything's as it should be. So I got yeah. an ECG echocardiogram last year. Like with all bodybuilders, we've got slight. Um, So, um, like, like, like a, yeah, yeah, like a left ventricular left, overgrowth. Left, yeah, yeah, left, yeah, left ventricular hypertrophy. We've got slight, but it was, it was, it was minimal. Um, and and my, it is normal for for that's, athletes. So yeah, that's not that's normal for athletes. My infraction rate, like my the, the rate that your heart pumps blood, was very very healthy. Um, so. It was. It, it all came back really good. The, the 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 sort of rhythm and the beats and everything were, were all as they should be. So I was very happy about that. And they said like you can tell you've got a healthy heart and you can tell that you keep yourself fit. Um, because when I do cardio, I don't know. I'm a bit sadistic, but I fucking do cardio. Like I don't just get on the pedal. Like I, f I fucking work hard. Yeah. Um, which I enjoy it because <clears throat> I've always been into like either boxing or athletics or football. So I do like sort of the 
the, the feeling fit as well. As, as fit as you can feel at fucking 300 plus pounds, but yeah. I, I do like working hard. So, yeah, I, I like to keep that in. Yeah, if you, if you don't have to do any breaks between left and the right uh, foot when you are putting on your socks, that you are pretty fit. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I, I, I do think it really helps with my training performance and my recovery as well because I, I feel like, especially at my <clears throat> my body weight and when I've trained with sort of bigger guys like me, um, like when I do like higher rep sets on like leg press and things like that, I can do like a 15 to 20 rep set. Um, and obviously I'm blowing, like I'm gassed, but I feel like I've, I've always got that like little bit more sort of endurance and, and, and recovery. So it's, um, it's definitely, definitely sort of worked for me in that sense. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, that, that was the biggest game changer for me. Maybe not cardio because I was, I've always done uh, six to seven times per week cardio in the off season. But uh, lately, when I start, started uh, working with my coach, like uh, Luki, uh, the, the coach where, where uh, uh, I am right now, he just told me to keep my steps in check. So yep. he just gave me the, the the step count, and I have to shoot uh, this goal every uh, every day, and that's helped me a lot in the off season and in the, in the contest prep as well. Just because we have a tendency just to sit because we are tired, and sit because we are bigger, and sit because we are full because it's off season, and then you prep, so you're tired and you don't have energy because you have. Less food and it's it's just just the never stopping wheel that's that's yeah. just that destroys you uh, day by day and if you are not keeping it in check, it's it's really hard to 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 even be in a good state of of mind just because yeah. this is something that keeps you going all day and it helps a lot. I, I agree. I, I think for me it's more of like a routine. Um, and, and like it just sets me up for the day. So I'll get up, I take my subs, I'll hydrate, I go and do my cardio. Um, or depending on if I've got athletes who are checking in very early for for shows or on peak week or whatever it may be, I need to get back to them straight away to get like the food set up for the day. <laughs> I might come straight to the laptop at like half five, six o'clock, check them in. Make sure they're all set up for the day. Go downstairs, do my cardio, come back in, take the dogs out, do like two two and a half thousand steps. Take the dogs out for twenty minutes, and then I'll come back again. I'll have a, I'll have a cup of coffee, sit down, maybe work for half an hour to an hour, and then I'll sit down and eat, eat meal one. And I'm starving for meal one at like half past seven, eight o'clock, and then I'm uh, I'm off. I'm ready for the day. Yeah, I know that John Jewett have a, like a standing desk and uh, uh, treadmill beneath that, uh, and he just working and walking throughout the day, and that's really smart and it's really good like a uh, time uh, management. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just can't do for me walking and doing anything else than listening to a music or a podcast is just impossible. Yeah. It's just too much for my my stupid brain to. <laughs> to, to follow yeah. so last question just because I don't want it to hold you uh, too long uh, because you have uh, a goal you have to uh, to uh, bring up your chest and yes. probably like you said that good 10 pounds of, of a fresh new tissue will be appreciated for the, for the judges so how long you you uh, like I wanted to to be in the, in the off season, so uh, to to ask a little bit better because I, I am a little bit uh, uh, on the wall with that question. <laughs> uh, when, when am I but, next stepping on stage? Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, um, like I said, six to eight weeks in this like recovery phase, health phase, um, and then. Off season will start mid November, which we've planned like a twenty two week push up. Uh, so a twenty two week sort of push. We'll then do like a another six to eight weeks of like freshening up, yeah. um, maybe into like a maintenance phase where 
drugs will start increasing and going back in, but calories will stay quite high. Um, and then about 14 weeks, about 14 weeks out from whichever show comes first next year is going to be either Prague or Romania, which is usually around October time, um, October, November, depending on what the season yeah. says. So I'm looking at getting on stage at the earliest next October, potentially November. So we're looking at Prague, Romania, and then Alicante, um, which could be the start of December if it looks like it's going to pan out the same as this year's this year's season, uh, this year's calendar. So it'll be the last three months of the year or the last two months of the year within that window, within like a six-week period. I'd like to do one, Two weeks later, do another. Two weeks later, do another. If it, that's how it falls, because I sometimes think back-to-back -back peaks can be quite difficult, especially if you're loading quite aggressively, like we we do with myself, to then have to come back down and then fill back up. So at least you've got a week to like wash off anything, get your body fresh and primed again, and then peak again. Um, <clears throat> so that's how we'll 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 try and plan it, but. We'll just see what the show calendar says in in 2025, but it will be it will be next year, um, and it will be will be the back end of the year. But that's that's the three shows. Looking at the calendar this year, that's the three shows that I'd be I'd be interested in. Yeah, if so, basically you're giving yourself a year. So if I yeah. I, I I wasn't like uh, up with with everything you do. I will probably tell you that you're crazy because uh, the amount of muscle you have already to have a, a, an idea that you're going to build that 10 pound of muscle in a year is probably impossible. But knowing your history, I know that's pretty possible for you. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. we, we, was, <clears throat> we was 10 pounds up stage weight this year from the pro card win. Um <clears throat> in better condition so when i won my pro card i wasn't as i wasn't as sharp as what i was at texas um by 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 a, by a stretch like the the detail just wasn't there and when i won the regional leading into my pro card i was like 282 pounds so if i'd have been 200 and i wasn't as sharp so if i'd have been 292 pounds on stage but leaner there's probably 12 maybe 14 pounds there of, of muscle so if I can make another another sort of seven or eight pounds this year, um, I'd be and in better condition or or very similar condition. It's it's definitely possible because I've I've always been quite for, for my size. I feel like I've been quite moderate with drug use. I don't think I've ever pushed it, um, and if I've only got maybe like five years maybe left doing this, the time to maybe move forward a little bit in that sense um, and just push things on a, a little bit more. Yeah. There's uh, th there's room for that. And, and you just get, I feel like each year that I do this, I just get better at those little 1%. Um, so just more consistent with, with everything, even though I feel like I act like a professional already in every aspect. There's always room for improvement with your recovery, with your sleep, with your yeah. stress management, with your digestion, with your posing. Like I've, I've just bought just simple things. Like I've got a waist trainer. As soon as I finish prep, I was like, I need to make sure that I control my midsection better. So straight away, I've implemented vacuums again in the morning, which I've probably slacked on a little bit. I've got a waist trainer on, so when I get up, that goes straight on. I do my cardio in it. I take the dogs a walk in it. I keep it on for the first couple of hours of the day when I'm doing work. And I can tell already, like, even sat here just subconsciously, I'm I'm more aware of keeping my, my midsection tight and, and controlling it. So th there's always room for improvement in, in, in every every department, which is, is what, I, what I aim to do again this year. Yeah, there's always a second gear, so... I wish you to to find another second gear this year, and I hope that you're gonna be 350 
but in even better condition than on stage <laughs> this year. <laughs> that's the, that's yeah. the goal. That's yeah. the goal. Thank you, Nathan. So if anyone just uh, uh, stays with us till the end of this podcast, I would highly recommend it to check out the description box below and there you can find all of the links to your to your social medias, to your YouTube channel, which is great, actually. I would really love to see more of the eating videos, supplementation and other stuff than the gym, just because I am not going to lie, I... Training I'm, videos. Yeah, oh. I'm tired of the training videos. Yeah, yeah. I've skipped but, all of the Nick Walker recent uh, videos just because this is just I, I, I had enough. I've got I've got one of my because my, my partner Phoebe she's in uh, um, Seattle at the minute. She competes on Saturday. Um, she's a bikini pro, so she's she's out in America at the minute. So I've got one of my friends who's a classic physique pro, uh, Jimmy Tong. He's staying with me for five days just for like a bit of a lads training camp um and i was speaking to to him about this earlier like no i don't watch any training videos on youtube anymore because how many <laughs> times can you yeah. see a push, a push session or a pull session or a leg day like we, especially as, as as pros like you can see everything on instagram people post the training on instagram you don't need to post it on youtube yeah. anymore so i'm gonna start vlogging um, as of next week when Phoebe gets back because she's got the camera with her but I'm going to start vlogging and, and doing more YouTubes m- myself now with like supplementation just updates and full days of eating and days in the life so uh, I'm going to I'm going to be stepping my YouTube content up over the next few months um, and I'm going to be trying to get at least one if not two videos out a week um, which will be a lot more just day in the life stuff, um, which I think people are a lot more interested in. And there will be some fun things coming as well. Um, me and Josh, I was speaking to, we were speaking about Josh earlier. Me and Josh have got a couple of food challenges booked in. Oh my God, it's going to be crazy. We already finished his prep, so you'll have to keep an eye on that. So we've got us, we've got we've got three planned up until Christmas. We're going to have to give ourselves at least a month in between <laughs> each one. <laughs> but yeah, Man, that'll be but- yeah, but don't get me wrong. I love the training videos, but from time to time. But if if there's a, someone who just posted every freaking every week, yeah, yeah, that's that's just. I think I think the training videos can be interesting if it's like a collaboration with somebody oh, yeah. else. Like, yeah, if it's like somebody training with somebody else, like the recent gasp, like for example, like from the uh, Iron Something channel, yeah, from, from Iron, Iron World. World, yeah, Iron World Talk. that was a great one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like James Holland's head's training with Jordan and, yeah. and Branch, and that's good to watch. Um, but yeah, like just everybody's normal training days. It's like I've seen the, it before. The simpler, the, the simpler, the, the better for, yeah. for me, to be honest. I, I, I am not even fancy for, for, uh, uh like hiring a, a video, uh, guy or something like that. Just you holding a camera, just, Freaking rough! You remember the the vlogs uh, that um, uh, Rich, for example, doing Rich Piana or uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, just vlog yourself. Yeah, that that's what that was uh, freaking easy and fun. Yeah, I, th- I think I think people are a, a little bit more uh, they feel a little bit more connected. It's a little bit more natural. You're not. You're not sort of playing up to the camera and thinking, oh, I've got to say this when I need to say this. You just, you've got one, if something comes to your mind, you just say it. And that's, that. I think it's a little bit more yeah. natural. So that's what I'm going to gonna start doing as of uh, next week when Phoebe gets back. Yeah, so I can wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm not oh. going to hold you, hold you for, for, for the more. Thank you for, for uh, giving me your time just because it's actually uh, pretty late. Uh, in Poland, for you, you just you just like a one hour. Uh, I am one hour ahead of you, I think. So yeah, five, five past eight. Yeah, so yeah. So it's time to to eat your probably almost last meal and just That's prepare right. for for the sleep. So yeah. So thank you once again, and for all of those guys who are still with us, just please subscribe, comment down below, and share this video as well as my. Uh, guests uh, channel videos and don't forget to subscribe uh, Nathan's uh, YouTube as well. Thank Thank you and see you next time.
See you next time. Thanks for your time, mate.